Friends, people say he has done this, he has done that. Don't believe them. I now almost feel like echoing what one of those great people of Germany, of yore, von Johanna Goethe said one day. He said, I now know philosophy, physiology, jurisprudence, and even a last theology. How much? From end to end with labor keen. But here I stand, O oh fool, with all my lore, no wiser than before. Friends, man must try to be wiser. When I look at the psychiatrist, I like him. Because most psychiatrists hate me. They would like to see me, see the end of me. Because I am dead against psychotic drugs. Because each one of them derived from either rocket fuel extract or from naphtha extract of nujol damage the human system. It's not only the psychiatric drugs, other drugs also, because there's a beautiful study done by an American scientist, a great scientist. He is actually a professor of genetics in the Washington State University. Douglas, he's called Douglas, D.C. Douglas. Douglas did a fantastic study. He created a chip called the MIT chip, mitochondrial chip a computer chip which tracks the drug when it goes into the human system and it tells you where what it does and he took a lot of our modern medicine we call it as modern medicine why is it called modern medicine i don't know anyway we call it as modern medicine and the other herbal drugs mainly tibetan chinese and indian herbal drugs and what came out in that study is something fascinating the minute we give any drug, when I give any drug, it may be anything from aspirin to statin, it, the body says, this is something new, I have not seen it. You know, my ancestors have not seen it. Mankind has not seen it. So it must be a poison. That's the wisdom of the human body. So any poison which goes in, the body tries to throw into the chemistry, chemistry factory in the body called the liver. So it's thrown into the liver. Every drug, mind you, mark my words, every drug. Now what the liver does, it does its best to destroy it. Does its best to destroy it. Supposing the liver is not able to immediately destroy the whole lot, something comes out of the liver, which we teach pharmacology students as first pass effect. I used to ask a lot of professors of pharmacology when I go around to medical colleges to lecture, what did you teach about the first pass effect? Very simple. Sir, it is the amount of drug that comes out of the liver after the circulation in the liver. But what is it them about, what is the philosophy behind it? Would you believe not one person ever answered that question? The answer should have been, or the student must have been told, try to prescribe as less drugs as possible, as less drugs as possible, because every single drug, when it becomes a chemical, is not recognized by the human system as its own. This is the beauty. I'll give you an example. There are 43 studies on garlic in the world literature. 43 studies on garlic. And the conclusion is, garlic is good for cooking, but not as a medicine. Now, there was an editorial in the British Medical Journal, and the editor was a good friend of mine, so I told him, I phoned him and said, I'm going to write a letter to you. Richard, you have done one mistake. You have not seen what did they use in garlic studies. What they used was a garlic pill. Now, what is garlic pill vis-a-vis -vis garlic? Anything that we give, we want it to be either nice to the body to, for taste or, you know, some obnoxious things you don't want. So, West, there are a lot of people who abhor the very smell of garlic. So, to sell drugs, what did they do? They removed the smelling part of garlic, which is called the SH group, the sulfidyl group. The same chemical that gives good smell for your fart. The same thing. So, they removed that. I'm sorry for using unparliamentary words, but you know, uh, you want to tell the truth, you have to really drive the point home. So, this garlic pill is garlic minus SH group inside a plastic capsule, which goes into the gut and there it delivers it. It's supposed to deliver it. By and large, most of the time, the garlic is eaten by the, our friends in the, in the toilet, whom you see on the television. See, when that, uh, what is that thing called, you spray it, and that, they all come like that. And then suddenly you get that spray, and then say, they all die. 
What's that spray called? I forget it. Harpic Excel. <laughs> you go, go back home and see. There are, there are billions and billions, trillions of germs in the, in the toilet. So they are very happy because they get good garlic to eat. What happens to you? Nothing happens to you. Now garlic to be effective in the human system, it must be eaten as garlic in nature. And that too in raw form. And that too put in the mouth, chewed. Kept there for a minute or two when it burns you. Because garlic is a medicine called alanine. But it is in the form of alicine in the garlic. And it mixes with the trypsine in the saliva to become alanine. Unless it's that, it's no effect. Now when we did that study, garlic is a fantastic medicine. Fantastic medicine. From killing germs, viruses, lowering your whatever you call, you know, you, people have an idea that cholesterol is bad, etc., etc. If you think it is bad, it will lower it. If it is good for you, it will increase it. Actually, now we know that old elderly ladies, you know, old elderly in English means above 85. Old elderly ladies who are still alive and healthy in the French nursing homes have on an average a cholesterol of 500 milligrams per cent to 900 milligrams per cent. Because in your body you have, how many cells do you have in the body? School going kids? 53 trillion, good, it is not bad. <laughs> anyway, 50 to 100 trillion cells, that is 10 to the power 14. And that those cells die in billions every day because they have their time to die. They are told that is called apoptosis. Apoptosis in Greek means falling of a brown leaf. This word was coined by a botanist called Martin Raff, who was a professor of botany in the University College in London in the early part of the last century. And Martin gave the name apoptosis. That is a cell, when it's told, there's a, there's a gene called the suicidal gene. Gene tells the cell, like for example a red cell, 120 days is life an RBC. At the end of the 120 days, it gets a message saying that, look, Mr. RBC, your time is up. So the RBC responds. The cell is intact. Apoptosis is intact cell. Becomes smaller, 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 and becomes amorphic. And loses its structure, form. And at that time, it becomes a speck of dust. And we have a lot of scavengers. And they are so efficient inside. They don't require even that machine to brew. They come, eat it up. Phagocytes. Phago, phage is appetite. They have got so much of appetite for cells. Any cell that is dying, they eat it up. So you are fine. But now what happens? You make the surrounding of the cell so bad that the cell, instead of dying apoptosis, dies by necrosis. Necrosis is cell wall breaks. And when this necrosis occurs, the cell content comes out, which is very bad for the outside, and the outside gets destroyed. And this is one of the reasons why you get cancer, etc., etc. So anyway, that's not our content. No, our content is this, that each cell, when it comes in contact with this kind of a drug, rejects it. So the drug must be taken in its natural form. That is why the poet wrote, little do we see in nature that is ours. Little do we say in nature, that is ours. Getting and spending, we seem to have lost our powers. What, what are we doing? Ask the chartered accountant, how many people want to cheat? I mean, probably, you know, in a philosophic way, today if you cheat the government, I would be very happy because the government is squandering that money. You know, you give that money as tax, it's used for, it directly is into the Swiss banks. And probably India is the biggest Deposit to the Swiss bank. So instead of that, you can do some good others. So we have a lot of these what are called philanthropes. The philanthropes are those who really want name for giving that thing. You know, I so and so has given that kind of a thing. I'll tell you a story of two great people. Bill Gates, whom we all know. Oh, great man. He does a lot of philanthropy. He gives money, etc., etc. Put just one billion dollars for the Gates Foundation. That too because he had a disease for which he didn't get a good psychiatrist like him, he was taking antidepressants. He suddenly had a disease. This fellow likes the tandoori chicken very much. And he suddenly started hating tandoori chicken. Bill Gates could not eat tandoori chicken. And he almost hated tandoori chicken. So he hated food and started losing weight. And all the medical establishment in America which he created because he owns three-fourths of the drug companies and almost 100% of the vaccine companies. Now, all that couldn't help him. One day somebody told him, look, 
why don't you do give something you know that's the essence of indian philosophy tena tyaktena bunjita isha upanishad says i should be saying that in front of tripati ji tripati he has the three vedas he has found huh? so what does it say tena tyaktena bunjita rejoice in giving so he was told to give so what did he do he thought for a long time kitna dena ek trillion ek ek one 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 billion ek billion for bill gates why n one billion is like for me one rupee so he gave one rupee and he made a big fuss about it doing charity what charity he gives you money but it comes back to his company so after some years there was a study done on bill gates charity which is published in the lancet a medical journal which says what horrible man he is if he is gives one rupee he gets back 10 rupees for his company this man see there there are people there was another rich man who could buy bill gates he didn't know that his name is warren buffett buffett has he is a chairman of 43 companies but he doesn't have a single company meeting when he selects a ceo for the company he thinks for one month when once he selects the ceo the next he sees him or contacts him after one year with a letter he says dear so and so see that you don't lose money for your shareholders two if possible improve that four do your duty warren that's all he has not met any one of his ceos and he is the richest man he was till very recently now bill gates has become richer howard hughes is also like that no bill gates so, so, so warren buffett one day calls bill gates for an appointment his secretary says no he is so busy next six months you can't see him he says i just want two minutes just want to see his face he said no 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 it's not possible he's so busy then he says i can i walk, talk to him she says no you can't talk to him so the old man one day goes to his office straight away goes to his office and walks into the office and he says somebody he didn't know who he was and he said i just want one minute of your time he said okay bill gates was upset but he said okay sit down he said i don't want to even sit down i have just got a check you are supposed to be doing lot of charity i want to give something to your charity but don't put my name bill gates gave 1 billion this fellow gave a check for 37 billion bill gates was almost about to collapse then he sat up stood up and made him sit down talked to him for 5 hours then he told him don't put my name don't do anything you just do some good things to society that's the difference between a true philanthrope and a man who behaves like an philanthrope so that is how society runs now come back to our drugs what happens when once you take any drug in its natural form the body immediately says ha this is mine i know my grandfather has eaten it you know it's like rice or it's like wheat so it is immediately taken in so the mit study or the the mitochondrial chip study showed that it is the body's intelligence and the energy that runs the system and not the drugs and all that the modern drugs could do is adr adverse drug reactions the biggest killer of mankind today is not a gun it's not a plane falling down you would be surprised in america alone whose population is little over the population of probably uh, nagpur <laughs> not not nagpur <laughs> 300 million around less than 300 million four jumbo jets full of people die every week due to drugs if one jumbo jet falls down in this world there will be news for two months in all the television 24 hours 7 and every week four jumbo jets fall down and these people unnecessarily die by what is called iatrogenesis doctor induced illness through our biggest weapons of mass destruction about which i have written with the caption called weapons of mass destruction in the british medical journal the drugs chemical drugs so friends avoid as many chemical drugs as is possible i had a colleague of mine professor of psycho- psychology some of you might maybe his name is kb kumar professor kumar who was at one time the president of the behavioral science society he is now in hyderabad this boy was so good i tell you i took him as the professor and within about 2 years the psychiatry department was empty no patient was going to the psychiatry department this fellow had to sit till about 1 o'clock in the morning 2 o'clock in the morning to finish his patient load so the psychiatrist started complaining about him 
writing memos about him. He is very bad. He is grabbing our patients. I said, nobody can grab a patient. If a patient wants to go somewhere, he goes. How can you say? So somehow or other, they managed to keep him till I was there. The day I retired, they somehow or maneuver and see, threw, threw him out. Can you believe that? The best doctor was thrown out. Anyway, he got a better job. And he is, he is now the, you know, he is almost the king of whatever he surveys. And still the same humble soul. And that's why I like this psychiatrist. Psychiatrists have become real drug dispensing machines. Just because they have no patience. The minute he says, uh, you know, I had no sleep last two night, then he says, did, did you, are you feeling fine? No doctor, I, you know, I, no enthusiasm. Right, he'll start with an antidepressant. And when will that end? Great. This is the problem. This is the problem. So this is where a psychiatrist, a professor of psychiatry in America, she was young, energetic, and was like our friend. She wrote a book called Dementia, a drug-induced crime on mankind by doctors. And she published this book. Her name is Grace Elizabeth Jackson. She was thrown out of the medical college. She was in the Naval Medical College as the professor of psychiatry. She was thrown out of the Navy. She was thrown out of the medical college, thrown on the road. But this book is getting her millions of dollars and she's, she's invited all over the world to lecture. And she, her lecture fees is such that, you know, one lecture she can, uh, 10, 10 months uh, salary comes in one lecture. So this girl is very happy. But what I'm saying is, this is the, how the world is. 1968, I wrote a small article called Unconventional Wisdom in Medicine. When did I write it? 1968. And my department sat together and said, this is a nut. He must be thrown out. So they proposed that I be dismissed. But anyway, that then Dean probably was a nut himself, so he didn't dismiss me. So I survived by the skin of my teeth. This happens. This very much happens in this world. So it is very difficult to fight for a truth. I, I don't want to call it the truth because Khalil Gibran said, never say the truth. It's a truth. And it becomes different later on because truth is not something which is stationary. When Nelson Rockefeller had depression in 1952, because he made so much money, pulverized everybody in, in Texas and made money from all other oil people, then he had a house, huge house, huge car. And then he was depressed. Depressed so much that he was not sleeping at all. Rolling in bed the whole night. Every, no psychiatrist could help him because he didn't come to Nagpur. So nobody could help him. So ultimately what happened was one day, he didn't sleep a wink. So he went to his lawyer the next day. The lawyer told him, why don't you do some charity? That was in 1952, 500 million dollars was big money. And he gave it as charity as Rockefeller Foundation. And Rockefeller improved and improved and improved. Died at the age of 89. So it is in giving that you get. And that is the philosophy in life. You may say, oh, I am not Rockefeller, I am not Ambani, how can I give? No. Can't you give one paisa from your one rupee? You don't lose nothing. Okay, you can't give that. Can't you give a smile? Because you may need a smile in the evening when, you, when you're tired. So give a smile whenever you meet. As uh, Sapna said that, in, you know, when you walk, the beauty of walking is not, some people say, I have money, I'll have a, what is that called? Treadmill. Like that. There also he has got that uh, computer insight, calculating how many crores are coming and going and he's running. No use at all. Walking must be, the walking's benefit is not just the leg moving. It's the beauty of the thing. You're being one with nature. And you're a part of nature. You came from nature, going back to nature, you're only a part of nature. And that is the beauty of walking in the morning. In addition to the physical exercise you get anyway. That's what Ayurveda usually says, Samikshakari, work very hard, that's the exercise. If you work very, very hard, that exercise is enough to keep you going. And you will feel very, you know, I'll tell you an experiment you do. A day when you are very tired, go for a walk. Come back, you are so rejuvenated, you have forgotten your tiredness. However tired you are, go for a walk. Maybe in the evening, maybe in the afternoon, maybe any time. And there is no time as long as the weather is okay, you go for a walk. And a lot of our ladies worry about sun, our best friend in the world. The man who keeps us alive, if the sun takes a strike, one week strike, we'll be all dead. Why we? Even the plants will be dead. So it's the sun's electromagnetic energy that keeps you and me going. And sun is the best friend. But the industry has produced a myth 
with television interest saying that you will get skin cancer, you will become black, your color will go and things like that. So you have so many things. Sunscreen, one of the important causes of skin cancer. Then all kinds of chemicals on the face, you know, you make up. You must see these people, American people who look so nice on the television. You see them in the house once. You will think it's some ghost of that person. So bad they look. Because the skin completely peels off. You go to Kerala and see those women at night, glowing face, because they put coconut oil and they, they take bath, never wash the coconut oil. Have you seen a Kerala lady in Kerala at the back? She has got a half moon in her blouse. That is her uh, hair standing there with a lot of coconut oil making an impression. Show me one Kerala girl who has got a skin disease. Because biggest germ killer in this world is coconut oil. Biggest germ killer. That's why in pickles you put coconut oil, you don't grow fungus in that. And you look at a Tamilian girl. No feet, you must see their feet. So clean. Because they don't get out of the house without turmeric paste on the feet. And many of them, of course, the olden style. These days, of course, people are westernized. They put the turmeric paste on their face. They all look jaundiced, if you look at them. They all look yellowish. These are all healthy things that we don't do. And the truth is always suppressed for business. Coconut oil. 1964, I wrote an article. Coconut oil is as good as mother's milk and the best fat because coconut oil and mother's milk are the only two things that contain sodium monolauric acid, which is the basis of human immune system. I even wrote there, suspecting doctors who have not studied their biochemistry properly will have a child to go and see the infant food, which is only coconut oil can be used for infant food. If you use any other oil, the infant will die. Because only two things that get digested in the mouth, because infant doesn't have the pancreatic juice, pancreatic lipase, so the fat can be digested only by the salivary lipase. And only two things, even today, you put coconut oil in the mouth, it gets digested there. You don't have to sub, sub, you swallow it. It just gets digested and directly goes as ketones. And that is why in America today, coconut oil is a treatment for Alzheimer's disease with very good results. Coconut oil now is the treatment for heart diseases from Harvard. And Harvard has now admitted that because we demonized coconut oil, millions of people have died all over the world. So, truth, it's very difficult, very difficult. I tell you, I have suffered so much that in 1984, I gave a talk on coconut oil for the heart in American College of Cardiology meet where there were 25,000 cardiologists meet in three cities only because such large conference halls are not there anywhere. And after the talk, they questioned me for a long time. Somehow or other, I survived. Then I was coming out that the old cardiologist he is no more now. May his soul rest in peace. Elliot Corday is his name. He called me and said, young man, do you have any other work in Boston? I said, no, sir. See, it's now 4 o'clock. It will be dark by about 6 o'clock and the soil lobby is so powerful here. They may bump you off. You better go. This is, this, is our, this is called truth. This is the truth. You must see the abusive letters I get. I wrote a book called What Doctors Don't Get to Study in Medical School. It came out. There's a big journal in India called the National Medical Journal which comes from All India Institute. And they think they're All India Institute, they're all gods because they have political clout. You know, he starts the All India Institute as an MBBS student and dies in NCD as this retired director or somebody. Till then, they are all in all in this. So he wrote two-page review. The author is a fool. He doesn't know science. He's a bloody fool. And he must be hospitalized. And the book is so bad. The English is horrible. And this and that. And all kinds of rubbish he wrote. Would you believe? Copies were sold in one week. So I wrote him a nice letter. Thank you very much for getting all my books sold. Now, this book was published in London by a company, English company, on their own. And the British Medical Journal wrote a review which said, this is not a textbook of medicine as claimed by the author, but it's a holy text of medicine written by a prophet. Then, all over the world it's sold. <laughs> it is so difficult to tell the truth. So difficult to tell the truth. So be yourself. And go back to your roots. Accept what you are. Because if I'm a monkey, if I know I'm a monkey and I accept I'm a monkey, I have no stress at all. But most of us, if we are monkeys, <laughs> look at this girl. <laughs> but most of us, we know we are monkeys, but we want to show to the world we are tigers. Now here is a stress. 
Because every second you have to act like a tiger, act like a tiger. Because if something slips, your monkeyness may be seen by society. <laughs> so the biggest stress is, you don't know who you are. Try to know who you are. And then, you know, life becomes so easy. Don't keep any secrets inside. Open book. Anybody can write on that book. Open book. And you are so compassionate, so happy. Compassion is the is real meaning. See, we have changed the definition of health now. We, in the sense, we have a group of scientists. We call ourselves the World Academy of Authentic Healing Sciences. We are 15 years old. And I accept me, I'm a villager. The 14 of them are who is who in the world of science. Four of them are Nobel laureates and they're very influential people. And we have had a decision to say we must change the definition of health as absence of mental, physical, psychological, spiritual, etc., etc. Death. And this is the definition of Alma Alta is a business thing. Because I tell you what, absence of disease. Now for that we have created a business called Chakap. Chakap. You are fine, no? You are fine, but you go to a checkup, you come out as a patient. <laughs> I'll tell you why, it is very simple. No, you do not, don't laugh, I am serious about it, very serious. Because today, you have a TBS, total body scanner, which scans 500 parameters of your body. Okay, now a little statistics, even a child knows, that what are we doing in medicine for the human body? We say your normal blood pressure, what is normal? What is your normal blood pressure? It is not what normal normal blood pressure. Mahatma Gandhi's blood pressure is 210 by 120 all the time. And Sushila Nair was not getting sleep. Mahatma Gandhi was getting good sleep. <laughs> what is happening here is, I have a friend of mine who's, who started Nimhans as the first founder director. R.V. Verma. R.N. Verma is now 89, you know, 91. This man has been seeing me for the last 45 years saying that his blood pressure is 90 by 40. I told him, why are you worried? Brian Box blood pressure is 60 by 40 and he is the strongest man in the world. So what is the problem? He said, See, when the doctors always tell you something to boost the blood pressure, I said, He put 92 years, he says, ah, this man kept me alive for 45 years. I said, I didn't keep alive, that man. So you will never die, you can't die. So your blood pressure is what is your blood pressure. So what is the textbook's blood pressure? It's called the average, statistical average. You check, our friend knows, all chartered accounts understand, actuaries understand that. You take thousand people, check their blood pressure and no blood pressure can be checked correctly by a human being because the very physics of blood pressure is wrong. I won't go into that because it will confuse you. Come back to this. Now what has happened is, you check thousand, plot it on a XY graph. If Correct me if I'm mistaken. Then you have a Gaussian curve called the bell-shaped curve, right? Yes. Then you say mean, mean, plus two standard deviation. Now that comes to whatever. Now I'll give you an example. What is the normal height of an Indian male? Gaussian curve, 5.4, 2 plus this side, that side. 5.2 plus 5.6, you're normal. Okay? Right? Amitabh Bachchan comes for a checkup. 6.2. Our treatment is cut his legs to make him 5.6. Are what do we na? Sugar ko kya karte hai, blood pressure ko kya karte hai, wahi karte hai. Then next day Jaya Bachchan comes for a checkup. <laughs> she is 4.6, transplant that leg to her. <laughs> day in and day out we doctors are doing this. Trying to correct the statistical average which we tell the common man as normal. So average becomes a normal, there will be what are called false positives. For every parameter, the false positive is 5%. Right, sir? Yes. Now calculate, I'm telling you. When you check 500 parameters, what is the false positive? 2,500. So 100 people go for a checkup, 2,500 patients come out. Isn't that a good business? So there was this professor of medicine in America. Her name is Leon Eisenberg. And this girl was 52 years old and she was a very brilliant professor. And she was worried about what she was teaching. One day she asked the brightest class boy who passed out came to her. She said, who is a patient? She asked. She was expecting a very esoteric answer. The boy very simply said, a man or a woman who sees a doctor becomes a patient. She had a shock of her life. She said, then when does he become a man or a woman again? The student thought for a while and said, rarely ever, madam, if ever. Full stop. This girl resigned her job as professor of medicine at the age of 52 because she said everything is wrong about medicine. And she sat the MCAT test, MCAT is CET, GET, whatever you has, and got a good grade, joined the medical school. That medical school, a student again, 
went through four years and came out and said, everything that we teach is wrong. Did you get it? You haven't got it because it's not publicized. That article is suppressed. This is very interesting. The first article which studied diet and heart started in 1954, ended in 1959, spent $110 million of the taxpayers' money in America and the study said diet has nothing to do with heart disease. But by 1959, the myth of fat has gone so much that we have started getting fat-lowering drugs, cholestramine. Have you seen that drug? You have to take eight tablespoons of that in the morning. It is like sand. And most patients used to vomit it. And that was the beginning of the cholesterol too. The statin today. 25 rupees a tablet you give, take it, it kills you. 10% of people who start statin, their blood sugar starts going up. 10% of statin use has become diabetic. So 11 million people take statins in India and 1.1 mil, 1 .1 million diabetics are added every year. Then we proclaim on the other hand by the diabetic drug people, he said India is the capital of diabetes of the world. False. The truth is India is the best country to have diabetes because Americans are following Indian rice diet for diabetes. South Indian rice diet. At least in the morning brown rice in the afternoon and brown rice in the evening and a little fruits here and there six times a day 8.30, 10.30, 12.30, 3.30, 6.30, 9.30 small, 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 small feeds and don't ever see wheat because wheat contains gluten gluten goes directly to the pancreas and maintains your diabetes if you're a diabetic wheat maintains your diabetes good, you know because we want diabetes to be maintained this is called disease mongering if everybody is uh, not mad, how, what will this doctor do? He'll have to close his shop. <laughs> See, this is, this, is, this is called taking medicine to the marketplace. What did Hippocrates say? Cure rarely, comma, comfort mostly, semicolon, console always. And what is consoling? What is consoling? Psychotherapy. So, Today, you people are not MDs and PhDs. You are the topmost doctors in the world. Because you are doing exactly what Socrates said. Not Socrates, our friend, our father, Hippocrates said. But we are all hypocrites. He was Hippocrates. And we took an oath in his name and immediately became hypocrites. Today, medicine is the biggest industry in the world. Cholesterol lowering alone is $1.72 trillion business. One company which sells cholesterol drugs gets an on an average 15 to 18 billion dollars profit. A cardiac stent, which is like your spring of the ballpoint pen, costs 10 dollars to manufacture. Sold for 2000 dollars. The budget is 500 dollars doctor's hospitality. And a company gets a small profit of 1490 dollars per stent. And of course, you don't get it for 2000. The hospital will have add to so many things that salt, then you know seasoning, etc., etc. It becomes about three, four lakhs. Now, what does it do at the end of the day? Nothing, because the blocks you see are not disease at all. The disease that kills you is not seen in the angiogram. It's called vulnerable plaque, which can't be seen. These blocks are very good because every even a child has a block. They did angiogram for young children in the American Army, aged between 18 and 22, who died in the Vietnam War and the Korean War. There are four vessel blocks, three vessel blocks. They were very healthy because God has given enough. That's called remodeling the heart. It's preconditioning it. These people with the block get a heart attack, they won't die. But if one gets a heart attack without a block, he will drop down dead. So, but we frighten that. We tell them, do you know the centers we use? You are sitting on a volcano. It might burst any minute. So the fellow says, uh, can he go home and come back? He has talked to his wife. I don't know. On your way back home also you may die. So you better do it now. Do you know why? If the bakra goes out and talks to somebody, he may not come back. Now a chartered accountant will tell you a, a cost of a cardiac catheter lab and surgery will be about 30 to 40 crores today. They don't put their money. They put some black money as uh, this thing and then borrow it from the bank. There are obliging bankers who give you money. Now having got the money, now calculate the interest. Calculate the other thing. So you require minimum four bakras a day to run the show. That is why Mark Tain wrote, I quote, For a man with a hammer in the hand and wanting to use it, everything here looks like a nail needing hammering. Absolutely true. 
That is why we have become a menace to society. It has to change. It can't change otherwise. It has to change from within. And that change can come only if we can give, bring here a generation, future generation, which is not as greedy as we are. It's a human greed that kills another human being. And if you don't have greed and if you don't have, as somebody rightly said, I think Sapan said, you have to ego, your ego, you have to sell it, is it? That's why the first thing I sold was, before I sold anything else, my ego in the market. So people say, oh, we must come to take you. I said, why do you come to take me? Do I get any special thing? And they say, we'll get the car. I said, look, you bring a car from 100 miles to pick me up. Then you take me to your place. Then you have to drop me back. That means four trips a day. Sir, that is our own car. Car is yours, but where is the oil from? You have to pay for it, no? Now what do I get if you come or if you don't come? I will take a taxi from here. My taxi company fellow is there. I'll come to your place, pay his taxi fare. And then I'll come back. So it saves at least two trips. They don't understand. People don't like it, sir. Chief guest, we have to bring him and all. I said, my driver brings me better than you. You know, I know him because I've been using that car for donkey's years and he is very safe. I can even sleep in that car. You don't bring a big car with a driver who is not known. I can't, every minute I have to be awake. People don't understand that. Because people want to be big, you know. I, people call me, you know, uh, our naughty girl, Poonam, was calling me a VIP. I said, I am not a VIP. I am a VVIP, very, very insignificant person. <laughs> but if you look at yourself, look at yourself. You are a colony of 100 trillion human beings. They are called human cells. And they are all you. And each cell has been living on its own. It has got its mind, it can eat, it can sleep, it can excrete, it can do everything. But for economic reasons, after these chartered accountants came, they said, no, why we everybody do everything, we'll come together. So about 100 trillion of them joined together and made a colony called the human body. And you think your human body is solid? There's nothing solid about you. You are like the television screen. You know, I'm talking here. It's like Amitabh Bachchan talking on the television or uh, Hema Malini dancing. You put the television on, Hema Malini starts dancing. You put it off, Hema Malini is dead. But you go to the dining room and put it on, Hema Malini is born there. That's what exactly happens to the human cell. This was found out by a cell biologist called Bruce Lipton. Bruce Lipton. There's a beautiful book you must read called Biology of Belief. This is a fascinating book. This man was an atheist. He never believed in God. And he was a professor of anatomy in the Wisconsin Medical School. And he was a cell biologist. And he was studying not the dead cells like most anatomy study, which he calls as the tombstone of a cell. He was studying a live cell. And he was studying this live cell. And then he saw the cell is live, moves about, does everything. It excretes, it thinks, it can... You just put a drop of poison at one end of the petri dish, the cell runs away from the poison. You put a drop of some good food there, the cell runs into the food and eats it. Then he saw, on the day you are made, you are the one cell, you are called zygote, your weight is 0 0.1201 gram. But that one cell, when suddenly gets a connection, that's what's called the integral membrane protein with an antenna, like your television antenna, it gets a connection from universal consciousness. And the cell becomes live and it just starts doing everything. This man was looking at it, my God, he said, I thought science runs this world, but look at it, something beyond science runs this world. And he became a believer and he wrote this book and now goes around preaching. Like our friend uh, Sapna who left her ophthalmology and went around preaching, Bruce now goes around preaching like a preacher, people to have belief in God because it's God who runs the world. That's what's called the biology of belief. Somebody was talking about emotions, the two people, our chartered accountant and our psychiatrist. Emotions have been proved to be chemicals. There is this girl called Candace Pert, a brilliant PhD student who came to the palace. America's NIH is called the palace, where all kings sit. Like, you know, here ICMR is a palace. And like that, no, they're all big people. They, I call them Sarkari scientists. And there are Sarkari intellectuals here who give opinion on everything under the sun, from sun to the moon. Everything they give. So the Sarkari scientist, the head of us, what's called Saul Snyder. Snyder is a big name, a Lusker Award winner and a big name. So this girl started her postdoc with Snyder, who had some money for finding out 
opiate receptors which are known to be only in the brain because we thought the brain mind, mind is only in the brain at that time so he told her find out if the opiate receptors are elsewhere this girl took to it like fish taking to water she worked very hard day and night day and night day and night but by the time the money was spent there was nothing left and still she has not got the receptor so Saul called her don't i don't want to waste my money on you this receptor is over you go and do, do do something i don't want you as a post doc but this girl said i'm going to find it one day something inside her saying i'm going to find it one day so she told him i don't want money sir but i'll continue in this lab he said for a change okay continue in the lab six months later she found out an opiate receptor in the muscle opiate receptor in the blood vessel and she was so excited and she had worked so hard she deserved a holiday she locked her laboratory and went away for a long holiday then something sensed in this fellow something is amiss. so he called the laboratory technicians and said what was this girl doing at night they said sir she was working on the same thing and she has found something is it then lock was removed at night and he got the ledger and got all her data and before she came back from the holiday he published the data in a paper and he was so influential that he went to Swiss Academy and said this is the thing I have found and they said okay you will get the Nobel Prize so Nobel Prize was declared in his name but was not given because the date had not come when this girl Candace came back she was so fuming because he said this fellow who destroyed my career now wants to steal my data very bold girl so she went directly to Geneva and Zurich and then talked to all the members and said this is my work this is my original data this fellow's photo started it this is not his journal and of course Saul did not get his Nobel Prize Candace lost her job Candace lost her standing in community thrown out Candace wrote a book Molecules of Emotion beautiful book Molecules of Emotion please get that book and read it Candace Pert C-A-N-D-A-C-P-E-R-T is her name and read that book and there's a beautiful sentence I'll tell you time will come when you get a headache you don't look for a pill instead sit in one place and elevate your consciousness to the level where your own brain produces enough opioids to kill your pain full stop what a beautiful thing <laughs> and that is the future of medicine my dear friends but we have to take it out de-link it from money unless you de-link medicine from money this medicine will kill mankind I don't know how many of you have read this beautiful article. If you have not, read it in the Google free. It's called Death by Medicine. There are five authors. The first author's name is Gary Null. G-A-R-Y-N-U-L-L. -L. Please read that. You will get a shock of your life that we are the leaders of death in the world. Followed by cancer lowdown and heart attack much lower down. On the top of the list. In a country where we think there are so much chucks and balances, if it could happen, you horrify, you take the audit in India, my God, you will be shocked. That is why we went to the IOM, convinced them that the future of health definition should not have absence of disease because there is nobody who has no disease. If I now scan all of you with the TBS, all of us will have not one cancer, 10 to 15 cancers. But they don't become cancers, they all die. When do they die? When you have a good mind and when you want to help someone, cancer cannot grow in you. But when you eat a lot, like a pig, and hate everyone, cancers grow like a tree. And that's what happens. And it's in the mind. Everything is in the mind. And where is the mind? Never mind. <laughs> and the mind is everywhere. It's in my hand. And who is the mind? For every nine cells of germs in my body, I have one cell of mine. In your body, for every single cell of yours, you have nine germ cells. In your own genome, we are saying we are human genome, we know everything, we are doing genetic engineering, we will do uh, stem cell. We don't even know one by one a millionth of a genome because genome contains 23,000 human genes and two and a half trillion germ genes. Germinomes, metabolomes, virinomes, all of them put together, the metagenome is all germs and I have written an article, you read that, a simple article called Germs are Us. Toys are us you have seen, you know. So I wrote germs are us. We are germs. So when I say, did your father have diabetes? Yes, sir. Oh. Then you become a diabetic. With fear itself, the sugar will go. Your father's diabetes has nothing to do with you. 
because your father had you that relationship is one in a million zeros one but you may be a diabetic if the germs is a diabetic so your germs child and these germs are our friends we have come one full circle from pasteur louis pasteur said germs kill and then they say germ theory was born and that's why mankind is alive it was a great day for medicine and antibiotics were and today it's a very sad day for medicine because there are 500 antibiotic molecules they cannot even touch some of the germs which have grown in the hospital called superbugs and then do you know how we kill it when murarji desai used to drink his own urine we used to laugh at him did you laugh you also must have laughed because most of us are rni you know rni resident non indians <laughs> most of us live here think with american mind now america do you know what they are doing because patients are dying like flies in the intensive care unit with the nosocomial infections one professor chu in john hopkins hospital she went into veterinary science in the veterinary science for hundreds of years infections were treated not by the present vets who use antibiotics in the olden days vets cows infection was used by cow dung this girl did a bold thing the patient was dying of a simple clostridium difficile infection and otherwise the patient was very healthy so she gave the shit of her patient's own mother 250 cc shit emulsified put it in a tube and put it in the mouth by evening the patient became all right now for severe infection the treatment is in american jargon fecal transplant fecal transplant murarji desai was drinking urine today it's fecal transplant now america says human urine has so much of calicrinins and so much of immune boosters that it could be treatment and cow's urine is now patented for treatment as an immune booster one day i was with the central minister this fellow was used to be my patient so he one day told me professor ek day shall i tell you a secret i said go ahead you can tell it to the world i don't care he said i said okay he was admitted with what is called ulcerative colitis you must have heard of it and which means which means we don't know anything about it it's called idiopathic disease we are very happy about this disease idiopathic means i am an idiot but that idiopathic is in latin and i am an idiot in simple english i am an idiot i don't know and he was having 20 loose motions of blood every day and lost about 20 kilograms and he was admitted in intensive care unit in the uh, the all in institute one day murarji desai his prime minister came to see him he told him you bloody fool on the first day itself i told you to drink your urine you forgot now anyway you are dying drink your urine he said and he says the next morning he drank because he wanted to survive one day drinking 20 became 18 two day drinking cut short 10 days drinking he went home and he is alive now because somebody has now removed a part of his brain intentional to make him a vegetable but he is still alive he is about 76 77 78 i have another chief minister friend of mine one day he told me professor ek day do you know your friend so and so yes he was our party chief and i had an eczema my father was a doctor i am i am an engineer but this eczema will not go i was so looking so ugly i couldn't face the world one day your friend that minister told me hey drink your urine i tell you i faithfully do that even today i have no disease at all i am so fine both these ministers were saying we'll give you money you do a research but i have done my research already because i have a lot of volunteers don't worry and we have shown how important it is i had a patient recently who had a heart attack and he came to me he survived some or other not because of me they all survived because of themselves now this man had ulcerative colitis so his gastroenterologist gave him sulfafyrazine and next day he had stevens johnson syndrome he was almost dying kidney failure whole body was bloated with skin and heart failure came came and he re- became really bad so his wife was crying doctor heart attack you saved him but with this simple diarrhea he is dying so i told her look if he is dying definitely ask him to drink his urine he became all right in a week's time the whole thing stopped so we have little do we see nature that is ours because the world is too much with us money is too much with us this is what our friend wordsworth william wordsworth wrote after the industrial revolution the world is too much with us late and soon getting and spending we seem to lost our powers little do we see in nature that is ours we have sold our soul a sordid boon friends don't sell your soul to the devil who is a soul 
now we know where the soul is here is this quantum physicist who is an astrophysicist his name is robert lanza and lanza has found that the soul leaving the body how many of you have read that beautiful book called h w wells written a book called holes in the wall if you are not read read it h w wells the fascinating book called holes in the wall or a book called bridge on san luis rey bridge on san luis rey it's a 1927 penguin classic written by a man called thornton wilder an american writer and in which he says how there are two worlds the world of the living and the world of the dead connected by a bridge of human love now multiverse is a theory of lanza multi universes and our sanatana dharma especially the upanishads talk about multiple universes and so beautifully and what the upanishads talk is quantum physics asino vrajati duram shayano jati sarvatah is what an electron is nobody has described the electron as well as upanishads that is why i tell people see ultimately indian philosophy is the greatest philosophy indian philosophy doesn't mean hindu philosophy there is nothing called a hindu religion it's sanatana dharma ageless religion and all people can a muslim can have sanatana dharma as christian can have sanatana dharma because sanatana dharma does not belong to any god because vedas don't proclaim god at all if you see om bhurbhu hasvaha surya e namaha surya is a shakti om bhurbhu hasvaha agni e namaha om bhurbhu hasvaha why e namaha what is why why is the lightning why do i do that prajapate e namaha ultimately i am doing it because i can't see that shakti called god so i am propitiating what he has created what is wrong in it that's the beauty of it and that is what is important at the end of the day so my dear friends spirituality is nothing very esoteric <coughs> we are all spirits not spirits but spirit spirits is what is available in the shop spirit comes from the word spirus in latin which is breath so our ancestors cave dwellers knew one thing an animal which they killed for eating did not breathe a live animal breathed so they hypothesized just as we do in hypothesis breath is a god who enters you and leaves you when you die which of course is not true but then that is how the word spirituality was developed from that spirituality is nothing to do with religion absolutely nothing to do with religion spirituality simply is dealing with the spirit that's a human being and how do you deal with the human being because why do you deal with another human being because he is a part of you today the greatest quantum physicist max planck says consciousness is fundamental everything else is derived from that so you are derived from the consciousness i am derived from the consciousness from the same consciousness supposing i want to hurt hurt our chartered accountant it hurts a part of my body so i want to destroy him my body get destroyed by my own cells that's called autoimmune disease me you concept leave that me business i business make it we business and the day you leave the i and you become a we you are fine a shishya went to a guru he said sir i have come here i want peace i want peace he was fighting and the guru said say that again i want peace he said okay say that without the i want peace want peace now without the pe- want peace see there is peace what is preventing peace want and then i so let us leave i and want and live in this world as we thank you very much